when we were growing up my mother was very particular about book reading culture and she would invest us and i do remember that i so the library was really close to our home and i used to cycle to the library and uh, we had this habit of book reading and it was um, uh, i would say indulged by into us by a mother but i don't see that very vibrant trend nowadays in the students why is that so is it because social media gives you a deluge of information and that has replaced the book so so how do you see that that thing i'm playing out in the street uh, you're side? right that uh, social media has play uh, has been playing an mm -hmm. important role in this mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can give uh, every information through it so uh, who uh, needs to have books right so right. Uh, i have also a similar story of book reading mm -hmm. that my mother used to read and i have seen her yes, that yes. Uh, she has been reading right. and my mo my father used to write Oh, so that's, that's why uh, so you I have been, genes. Yeah, yes, you have writing genes. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, because I do remember, um, particularly there was this uh, incident. So my mother went to a parent-teacher meeting and she uh, saw my uh, write-up and she was not impressed by the way I was looking. And then she said that you know, um, every day uh, I think at, after we are done with the homework, so you have to read a particular paragraph of the newspaper and then you have to write a summary of that. And at that time, I hated this practice so much because. I felt that it was such a burdensome and fatigue thing to do, but you know the way it has immensely contributed to my vocabulary. But uh, unfortunately, I don't see that happening very vibrantly nowadays in the younger students. But now, when we are talking about the social media, when we are talking about the activism, about the women empowerment, you do have the plans for how you want to particularly um, translate your activism of the women empowerment through the social media, and and I mean, uh, you're exploring the intersectionality of the social media right so do you believe that social media is a vibrant uh, thing uh, which can level the playing field for the women empowerment or is it a great divider because the places where do not have the access towards the social media obviously people are deprived of lots of things that are going there right so so what do you think about it uh, exactly uh, social media as uh, for example balochistan mm. Balo balochistan is a marginalized area and the people uh, have been there is also marginalized especially women mm. so there uh, was a culture i came across that they uh, uh, the women of that place got married uh, before their 20s right so uh, uh, after the uh, uh, after the uh, Imran Khan government and uh, uh, in 2022 they launched a policy and according to this they start uh, they, they started this so I thought the social media plays an important role in this because social through social media they got to know that they need to be uh, very um, but they are marginalized right right yes of course they are marginalized uh, but now let's talk about your other books right so what are your other books about and one particularly about the poetry so are you a poetess and, and how come you ventured into that uh, particular arena of, of the book writing uh, basically, it's like a dream. Mm -hmm. My father, my father used to write, and uh, I have seen her uh, since childhood that he used to write. But he never published a book, and there is always an answer uh, he uh, he has right. that uh, he used to say, uh, "I don't even have much resources. That's why I uh, didn't publish anything." Mm -hmm. So um, I did everything that mm -hmm. my parents used to lack in life due to resources and due to scarce. Re they have scarce resources. Right. So this is the only motivation behind this. Right. And uh, poetry, uh, I love Iqbal. And uh, oh, as Iqbal uh, used to write, uh, when Muslims were in, when Muslims were marginalized. Deep slumber, so, yeah. Yes. yes. So uh, as this time, I uh, used to write uh, because Muslims are is uh, Muslims are also marginalized in this era too. Yeah, I mean, yes, we do see that there is generally. Um, I mean, what do you call it, the, the moral degeneration part of it and we see that, uh, especially in the Ummah and we see that they were a vibrant force at, at one point of the time in the history and, and they are not like that, um, obviously, and, and you see um, the lots of cases, for example, what is going on inside the Indian illegally occupied Kashmir, what is happening in the Palestine and Gaza particularly, now, obviously, but uh, Fatma, let's move on to your um, future plans. So, uh, what do you intend to do and um, so, so you had, you, before this red light of the camera went on, you told me that um, you, you are, after graduation, you're going to work with the particular organization and what are your plans about it so how are you going to make create more awareness regarding women empowerment and obviously it's a very broader term it's a very um, it's an arena that covers a lot of particular sub areas so what are this some particular sub areas that you want to focus on 
I uh, I would be f uh, focusing on uh, something that is very close to my heart and that is minorities. Okay. So women uh, belong to minorities uh, are uh, more marginalized than other women. So I would be uh, working uh, for them more mm. and more. And, and how how are you going to work for them? Not only uh, by spreading awareness, but also mm -hmm. uh, with field work. Right. What so sort of field work you have envisioned? Uh, as I uh, work with a Millennium Fellowship, and mm -hmm. uh, I selected as a campus ambassador mm -hmm. from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, it's basically a United Nations uh, impact, and they started a project to uh, empower society right. with right. sustainability. Right. So uh, I applied for a grant, uh, right. and once I would get that. Uh, I will be um, uh, more uh, active and uh, I would do field work because as you know that eco our economy is uh, not uh, that much better and right. uh, we are developing and uh, uh, I'm really sorry and uh, it's uh, Pakistan yeah, is yeah. an underdeveloped, underdeveloped so, uh, uh, so country. Yeah, it is a developing country and obviously in the days to come we are going to say that things will improve inshallah this is our hope um, and obviously we want that to happen but Fatma now let's come back to the women empowerment let's come out to the activism and um, since you are invested in the literature in the academia and there are lots of ways to uh, spread the awareness right and one of the ways is writing about it and, and I mean particularly expressing yourself through the literature so uh, now let's focus on the academia let's focus on the literature uh, so which particular books are you invested in because you are writing books right and for writing you need to have a good reading capacity or good reading habits so what sort of books do you read uh, I have uh, read uh, uh, 1067 books okay. and okay. and then you count them, <laughs> oh that's wonderful. <laughs> and uh, m there are a lot of books, historical books, novels and uh, now uh, I like what, to what read about Claire. What is the latest books that you have read? Okay. So what are the latest books that you latest have read? Latest book, hmm. uh, Climate Change. Okay, and which particular author? Uh, I <laughs> didn't know about author because there are a lot of books. Okay, okay, that's wonderful. Uh, but obviously, when we talk about women empowerment, when we talk about climate change, so uh, what is the latest li literature that is pointing out? I mean, is climate change linked with the women empowerment? And what are some of the uh, things that you would like to mention here and highlight here? Uh, the, fir the first and the foremost thing is uh, we need to spread awareness about uh, women as uh, we are um, marginalized and as I belong to a very uh, marginalized area mm -hmm. and so many people don't even know how to pronoun pronounce it and okay. it's uh, Melsi. Mm -hmm. So uh, once uh, I came there and I used to tell people that I belong to that place, they didn't even know about that. Mm -hmm. So I just want to spread awareness and I just want to tell people that uh, you don't need to have silver grey hair on head to mm -hmm. spread awareness. Right. You can create impact and you can uh, create your own life and you can be a change maker. True, true, true. You can be an agent of the social change and obviously like Fatma mentioned that you don't need to have the grey hairs over your head to make a, or influence a change. But uh, do you believe Fatma that if you uh, are an empowered woman and it's, so you do have the ability to influence the social change, so how would you define the, your conception of it in a broader term? Uh, I would uh, define it uh, as I can do it through social media, mm -hmm. but it's not an appropriate and right way, but it is the way right. I can do it right now. Okay. So okay. Uh, as the world is developing and as uh, uh, it is changing in its means right. of spreading awareness, so as it is changing, I will be changing my own ways to spread awareness. Right, right. And I think um, she's young, she's testing, she's experimenting what works, what doesn't work. So Fatma, best of luck for your future ventures and best, best of luck for whatever plans that you have and make sure that you make us more prouder because you have three books to your name in such a young age. And I think that's a big achievement. And considering the fact like we talk about it that um, people nowadays, especially the younger lord, the generation, uh, millennials and generation Z, they're more invested in the social media and I see that there's a declining trend of book reading. So if someone is in invested into the book reading, if someone is publishing books, that's a big, big thing. And uh, I think uh, in the future to come, so you may prosper. Uh, best of luck and all Thank the wishes so are with you. Thank you so much for coming to our uh, Maya show. And with that, we are taking a short break. And after you come back, we have an interesting discussion lineup. So don't go anywhere. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back and 
before going on to the break, I alluded to the fact that we have some interesting discussion lined up and that pertains to the environment. And uh, obviously, we were talking about the women empowerment, how it is interlinked with the environment. But when we talk about the environment and especially what is uh, coming, which is just right across the corner or in the round of the corner, that is the Ramazan, right? And I always feel very blessed to be observing another Ramazan because Ramazan is the month uh, where you feel that there is a change in the spirit. You will feel that there are lots of altruistic tendencies of the people that are coming out. People are contributing. People are doing dastarkhwan. They are giving out to the poor people. So you feel that um, there is an upsurge in the charity and people, especially the poor people who might are or not might that looked after uh, across the year. But uh, in Ramazan, they are specially catered for. And obviously, whatever you do in the Ramazan, whatever Nike you invest in the Ramazan, it has a multifold effect. Um, multifold effect because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. So how to make your Ramazan more meaningful, which is uh, are we, what are we going to discuss today. So we are very glad that we have been joined by one of our very favorite, who was a very regular on our show. So we are very glad that we have been joined by Abdul Wahab Saab. Assalamu alaikum sir and thank you so much for coming to our show. Welcome Salam and thank you so much for inviting me over such an interesting and useful topic. And thank you so much for always taking time out for us and for always contributing towards our very meaningful you know, conversations. And it's my pleasure and right. it's an honor to be on the national network and with people, excellent people like you. Jazakallah. So it's always an honor. You Jazakallah. Know. So sir, let's uh, start the conversation and let's de develop it further. So how can we make our Ramazan more meaningful? So what sort of, do you think, activities yeah. <clears> we should engage in that can bring more meaningful impact into our lives? Because nowadays I see that people are focused on the longer term goals, right? You need to have a longer term goals and not everyone has that stamina, not everyone has their life figured it out, right? Yeah. But there are small things which always contribute towards being meaningful in their life, right? Exactly. So I think if you are engaging in the small meaningful things, they're also yeah. contributing towards your larger growth towards your evolution so so you know how can we make it more meaningful Ajira, i mean your your question is such an excellent question and with the present scenario right. you know what is happening right. almost uh, an age has gone right we are having more than 65 percent youth yes and unfortunately we haven't we haven't trained them hmm. about religion about fasting hmm. about our rituals and rites of Islam right so basically what has been happening we as as you observed in your question as well mm -hmm. that somehow I mean we are not able to reap the actual harvest of Islam of fasting from this month first of all we need to tell people as a whole what fasting is mm. fasting is really not remaining hungry yes or thirsty yes. from dawn to dusk. True, true. It has a lot of elements, and if those elements are not complied with, hmm. if we do not pay respect, if we do not care about those essential items, Allah doesn't need us to remain hungry true. or thirsty. Hmm. So, first, we should teach our society right. that Allah didn't want us. Allah is not cruel. Allah loves us more than the love of 70 mothers. True. Uh, so why he would like us to remain hungry or thirsty, especially in the hot summer of say June, July, August, like we have in Pakistan, true, true. there is a reason for that. Mm. Allah wants us to be pious. Mm. Allah wants us to be tolerant. Mm. Allah wants us to face the heart and sar of the society, to face the tribulation, tribulations, mm. griefs, sorrow, mm. with resilience, mm. with patience, with a sort of uh, attitude mm. like you are in a war with very less resources, your enemy is 10 times stronger than you. Mm. If you lose your courage, mm. you cannot defeat. True. But if you show the resilience, you show the courage. Like mm. if you look at jang e mm. what happened basically? It wasn't the Ramadan, right? Exactly. Mm. The enemy was much stronger. True. But Muslims had faith. Mm. What is faith? That faith is lacking these days. The faith is 
come what may come allah is with us allah is going to save us if we tread on the path of allah by all means allah's help is going to come if we really forego if we sacrifice our rest if we sacrifice our food if we sacrifice sacrifice water if, if we sacrifice our comforts if we sacrifice our luxuries if we sacrifice of all those nitty gritties which we have become used to these days mm -hmm. that is basically fasting i mean what is happening these days people are fasting and many do not even wake up for seri which is a must everybody <laughs> has to and if i ask people if i tell right. people it is better to have at least 4 or 5 hours rest before seri true, you know true. in order to have a fresh mm -hmm. sort of body fresh mm -hmm. mind and if you prefer if you do not get time during the day you may sleep a bit after the seri which is though not advisable right. because usually afternoon nap at least 1 to 2 hours rest in the afternoon mm. that is the best for your body that, right and at it's the also sunnah right exactly mm. it is also sunnah yeah. at the same time i mean we have become used to extremely heavy food yesterday why i was in a supermarket and i was thinking why all of a sudden supermarkets have been thronged by people right. there are a lot of people and they are filling their baskets like perhaps they are going to face a war next mm. month mm. they are filling trolleys with meat with lentils with all those soft drinks all those fizzy drinks but i i think they are preparing for the ramadan and there is nothing wrong with that because i have been constantly receiving a lots of messages where people are saying that if you want to contribute we are making the packages and we want to contribute towards the poor people and i think that is the altruistic spirit of ramadan which is very vibrant and which you can feel uh, in this particular month but now let's sir have this conversation on a something you said which is very important which is the concept of taqwa right yes. one of the reason um, these fasting or or the ramadan or the rozas were um, imposed on us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which Allah mentions in the Quran is so that we can become muttaqi or we can practice taqwa and it has been done people on the people before us right it is mentioned very clearly in the Quran uh, and taqwa is a scale it's a barometer it's a gauge which is used to uh, define a character or a worth of a person in Islam right it's not the sex it's not your religion or it's oh, sorry it's not your race gender ethnicity it's just the taqwa right and just look at the maqam of hazrat bilal habshi right so holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has reported that he heard the footsteps of bilal even before him but yet he was in the bonded slavery he was uh, the first from the slaves to accept the islam right so this shows that taqwa he was good in the taqwa yeah. he was good in <clears throat> exercising the taqwa and one day he didn't offer the prayer the azan and and we see that um, the sun didn't rise because arsh walon ko pasand thi unki azan so uh, and nowadays if we see how the islamic society or our society in particular they are playing out we don't see that uh, taqwa is is the moral gauge or or it's a, a sort of a moral compass through which we can assess the character so there are lots of other artificial superficial things that have crept up so for example we assess someone's power uh, through the money they i mean possess right so yeah, how yeah. can we revert back to yeah. those very beautiful standard of taqwa which islam has set in because we're forgetting those values yeah you're absolutely right when you say where we have drifted away from religion true religion has become something less important for yeah. us this world has gained more importance mm. which is extremely long mm. which is taking us to towards the dinuma mm. where we will neither be uh, we neither this world mm. be of any use mm. nor we will get any place uh, uh, in the hereafter true the thing is you know as you rightly said mm. this this taqwa piety mm. what is this and why we are not having this because we do not believe that this life is mortal mm. and hereafter mm. that is for forever for eternal mm. so what is happening we are saluting a smuggler True. who descends off a 12 crore uh, land cruiser True, right absolutely. and 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 we we perforce we respect him True, true. But true. a philosopher, a teacher who spent sixteen hours in building a nation, who doesn't uh, afford to buy even a bike, mm -hmm. if he gets a bike mm -hmm. when he, uh, I mean, gets off the bike, right. we just make his fun. 
we, we pass derogatory remarks. That's he didn't do anything in life. He never got that much to get a bike, even to buy a bike. So, coming back, piety. Piety is what? Piety is that we pass a very simple life. Mm. We eat very simple. Mm. This Ramadan, we try not to eat all junk food. We try not to eat all that oily food. We try not to have six or seven dishes either on Sahari or on Niftar. Mm. We try to just have the normal, simple food which we always have. Mm -hmm. At in breakfast or in dinner, usually majority of us, we hardly have one curry and with that either rice or chapati or roti or bread, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. and with salad. So if we try to have that, what we do, we do not make it heavy on our pockets at the same time we help economy there are a lot of people suffering because of the severe inflation True. the black marketeers create in this market because of extraordinary demand mm -hmm. for all eatables mm -hmm. believe me if all of us decide that piety demands us to eat simple and we do not buy or do not mm -hmm. arrange that lavish food mm -hmm. that body doesn't require that food second point I mean, we pray to Allah with all sincerity. True, true. Number three, we try not to show off. We try to make our postures, our our personality simple. We remain humble. Right. And I think I would like to pick up this conversation yes. of showing off, right? And I do believe that in this modern society and especially with the advent of social media, because social media is such an integral part, uh, it, it is becoming a fabric of our daily life, so much so that we are unable to uh, distance ourselves from the social media. Yeah. And I think social media rewards this show of behavior a lot, right? So You're we right. were having this discussion that it validates or it rewards the narcissistic tendencies within the people. So you will find that, you know, there are celebrities weddings going on where people have invested so much money and this particular mm -hmm. term or adjective that has cropped yeah. up in English language which is the event is very Instagrammable right so you are putting photos yeah. you are putting so much show pomp ostentatious display of your wealth and then you're putting on the social media and you just want it to be the talk of the town which will I mean last for a week or maybe you know yeah. for two or three days or less right and in Islam this ostentatious display this pomp this glory um, it's not very encouraged right exactly um, because Islam focuses on, on a moderation, right? It does not say that you become miser. It does not say that you become very um, sort of what you call spendthrifter, right? So, so uh, it, it focuses on the moderation. So when you see that the social media is such an important fabric of our life. So if Ramadan is coming, we will see right. that people will host lavish iftar parties, right? right. With, the, with, I mean, so much going on and, and it would be, yeah. again, an <laughs> ostentatious display yeah. of their... So, it, let, it me, let me pick uh, one, one, one thing from the same uh, I mean, discussion you have just generated. Right. I was seeing Ambani is going to marry his son. Oh my God, and that's there's a crazy half, yeah. half billion dollars mm -hmm. uh, expenditure. Uh, many people among us, they're just cherishing that perhaps we might also would have been Ambani or at least a branch, yes, a yes. cousin or, f or, or some, uh, some sort of person like him. I say Ambani doesn't believe in hereafter. Ambani doesn't believe in Jannah, right? Mm. So whatever he is doing, he is doing for the success in this world. But we, we who believe that on the acts of uh, uh, all those acts which we do in this world, we are going to get rewarded on the basis of those acts. Right, right. What we will do? We will just marry our son or daughters mm. within minimum possible money, mm. if we have money. Hmm. The rest of the money should go to orphanages, True. should go for the, the care of widows, should go for the uplift of society. True. So coming back to the point when I, when I said we need to be more tolerant in, during this Ramadan. Hmm. Piety has very essential element of tolerance when we are on roads hmm. and we have to reach uh, oh, yes. home at iftar time. <laughs> but there is no possibility because thousands of vehicles are stuck. What should we do? Should we start horn, giving horn? Should we really start feeling crazy? Mm. Should we start scolding people? Mm. No. Please keep few dates in your car mm. with a small bottle of water. Right. Even if you end up in middle of uh, traffic square, right. you are not able to reach home. Just <laughs> break your fast with that. But remain polite. Remain fearful of God. That is right? the test. That when, is your test. When you speak to mm. people, be polite. Right. Be polite. Mm. Because God is going to reward 
That's you, politeness, yes. because of your politeness, mm -hmm. if you show anger because you haven't break, broken fast at home, but right on the middle of the road, God is going to get angry. That's true. At the same time, have fear of Allah mm. and try to donate, try to give to those who haven't got anything. Mm. These days, you know, I mean, these utility bills are so high True. that yesterday I was reading a post from a very reasonably well-off person who was having, I appeal all of you, please give me a loan of 28,000 rupees in order to pay my bills. Believe me, I am not left with a single penny to buy even ration. Hmm. You see, so I mean, most of our people, they earn too low and they really cannot afford. And during this month of Ramadan, please take care of all those people sure, sure. around you. Go out. You eat normal. I don't say don't eat. Huh? Don't starve. Hmm. You eat like you eat in normal days. Hmm. All that extra money, all those, I mean, luxuries. For example, if you're going to buy these days uh, melon, hmm it's almost more than 300 rupees a kg. Mm -hmm. If you're going to buy strawberry, it's almost 500 rupees a kg. And believe me, banana has been kidnapped from the markets almost a month ago because all hoarders, black marketeers, mm -hmm. they have stored bananas. And if it was being sold at the say 200 rupees a dozen, I can bet first day of Ramadan, the same banana would appear in the market at 400 rupees tag I for know, a That's very unfortunate how we as a Muslim because we are the part of the Ummah and um, we see whenever the Ramadan is approaching so we see a hike in the prices and it's all black market that has been going on and, and that's very unfortunate practice and obviously government is doing and has in the past has done a lot to crack down on such sort of practices but obviously there are leakages in the system and such practices go unchecked uh, but sir now let's discuss about so we were talking about social media and we were discussing about um, how it is such an integral part of our life and and so you get a lot of validation on the social media so the concept of likes so the yes. concepts of um, plays and those concepts of um, I mean uh, replays and retweets and whatnot right get, getting viral and whatnot so with the social media, I think what they have instilled in uh, us in this digital century is that we need validation from other people. Yeah. But in Islam, you need validation from Allah. And Allah lives inside your heart, right? And Allah has defined a very elaborate system. It is a, You can find it in the Sunnah, you can find it in the Quran, because both of them complement each other, right? Um, of do's and don'ts of the life. And if you are doing good things, you will get the validation. because And, and whenever you're doing good things, so you always have this happiness in the heart, because in hearts you will find um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lives, right? So... Again, how can we then become a productive members of this society as a part of the Ummah in the Ramazan? Because we find that our habits have been altered a lot by the social media. So how yes. can we revert okay. back to those? those use, old? I would say use the power of social media positively. Yes. We, we go to any, any big restaurant mm. or any big eatery. We, 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 we post it. Oh, we are sitting here. <laughs> we are enjoying this because people know, I mean, the coffee he or she is holding in his hands, he or she must Very have cool got 8,000 yeah. rupees, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Instead of that, for the month of Ramadan especially, try to motivate people through, you are helping at least four or five people. Though, I mean, from religious point of view, this is not good, but, but again, we have to encounter this, this war on social media. So the best strategy is to use anti-weapons, you know, the weapons, for example, yeah. actually as well. And, and generate your own yeah, encounter you, you, yeah. you, you either arrange a dastarkhan or become a part. Right. You know, Allah Ta'ala says that after your own fasting, the best thing I like is that you help somebody break his fast or her fast. Mm -hmm. And Allah assures you that the person who has fasted, you're going to eat you are going to be equally rewarded for that fast mm -hmm. at the same time his reward won't be minimized to even a single one person you right, see right. so you are getting the reward of your own fast at the same time you are going to be rewarded for example if you help five people break their fast mm -hmm. you see so imagine how much reward you are going to earn mm -hmm. so please try to do that if you can't do that alone mm -hmm. then Try to form groups mm. and in groups, at least in your street, in your area, mm. be uh, a team member mm. for hosting at least 25 to 30 people. Mm. I believe me, there is so much poverty. Islamabad used to be perhaps one of the most affluent area. Yeah, it right. had 
no, uh, no, no poverty. But I'm saying on the roads in evening, there are Dastar Khans for 300, 400 people almost in every sector. Minimum, there are going to be almost 30 to 40,000 people who are eating every day, either lunch or dinner mm. uh, f f um, from the contributions of those who have money. See, okay. so I really salute all of those people. Mm. I just request them, please try to enhance this passion which you have for poor. Try to help them more mm -hmm. because you are going to get rewarded perhaps 100 times more. Mm. Taking this message further, mm. we need to be more honest in this month. Right. We are, I'm sorry to say, I mean, we have forgotten what honesty is. True. We have. Not just for this month, yes. I think try to make it your habit for yes. the entire rest of exactly. the year to write. We have forgotten what mm. dutifulness is. Mm. At the same time, uh, my appeal to all youth elders, mm. I would just uh, give you a story. Almost uh, when I was young, I was in graduation mm. and I had a friend of mine who was mm. living in the back street. And the, the month of fasting was June. Uh, after Asar prayer, I, I was chatting with him. I said, how you are fasting? Mm. He said, I'm very lucky. He said, you know, um, uh, my, 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 I'm, edu I'm off from education these days. So I had three months break. So what, you know what I'm doing? I wake up at 12 o'clock. I, I, I sleep after Seher. I wake up 12 o'clock. I go for Zohar. I come back. Then I watch a movie mm. until 6 o'clock. So, I hardly fast for one and a half hour because at that time Maghrib used to be at 7.30. Yes, you see, and he was trying to convince others this is the best way. Mm. I appeal all my youth people that when we say piety, piety means all the time you have to be in the search of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to be in the search of virtuous acts. Mm. So today, the generation today, they have forgotten what, what is vice and what is virtue. Mm -hmm. I mean, though, I mean... I think that is the biggest of our test that to differentiate between what is good and what is wrong because um, there is a hadith which says that um, the la last stage or, or, or I think the weakest stage of the iman is that you think that um, that burai or that vice is vice in your heart. Exactly. Right? And that's exactly. very difficult so to do nowadays. So people do not recognize. Right. At the same time, you know, I will tell you, I mean, what is sacrifice? Basically, when we say piety, I mean, sacrifice is perhaps one of the most major elements of, uh, mm. of, of fasting. Mm. Sacrifice is Huzur Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was about to his breakfast and he listened that somebody more hungry, mm. he was asking for help. Mm. He donated all the eatables he had in front of him to the guy and he <laughs> continued his fast without eating. And I think believe me because uh, I have experimented and I've experienced it myself that whenever mm. you are doing something because you have uh, dard in your dil or you have the softness in your heart, Allah rewards you multiple because exactly. nothing escapes his exactly. eyes, nothing escapes his attention. We are all uh, being very vigilantly looked after by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And this is how, this is the spirit of Ramazan. This is how that you need to become more better and productive members of this society and not just the members, but more better movement of the society. Thank you so much, Wahab Sahib, for coming here, for having this wonderful discussion regarding how we can make Ramazan Amazon more productive but now we have a little girl she happens to be Abneen Gil uh, I'm sorry so so that's a boy so my, my bad and um, it's his birthday and uh, happy birthday to you Abneen and make sure that you become a more productive member of this society so happy birthday to you may you have many more and uh, may you make your father more prouder and may you become even more cuter and cuter Child, so once again, happy birthday to you. May you have many more. Happy birthday to you, and may you have many more. So, with that, um, uh, we uh, wish you all of the best uh, and uh, wish you all of the best in your life ahead. Uh, with that, I will say and bid you farewell. And until next time, it's a goodbye, Allah Hafiz, and good morning.